Hi everyone and welcome back. I know it's been a while and thank you so much for your patience. Hopefully you didn't even notice I was gone because you were so occupied with your own exams. If you haven't yet, I'd recommend watching this video where I explained and walked through my results in the second and first year. I also described the Cambridge grading system that I will not explain in this video. So click on it and come back later being enriched and informed. randomly stumbled across this video and don't know my stats, um, here they are. My name is Julia, I'm 22 years old, I've just finished my third year in Cambridge doing computer science. I have not yet graduated for reasons that I'll explain later in this video and I was a member of King's College. Now let's talk numbers because that's what most of you came here for. In my first year, I got a 2-1, not just any 2-1, the highest 2-1 of the year group. I got 269.75, where the grade boundary was 271. I was super frustrated knowing that if only I had got that one mark on some random question, I would be in a different grade category. But anyway, I tried to let it go. In terms of ranking, I was 24th out of 100 people, which felt very good knowing that I'm at the top university studying with the greatest minds. I made a promise that in second year I would try harder and since I would know things and how Cambridge is run, I would be more equipped. <sighs> that did not happen. Very far from that actually. Halfway through the year I realized that I truly hate computer science. I didn't know why I chose the course, I wanted to switch and nothing was working out. The supervisions were pretty crap. Um, I could not understand the course. What I told myself is that if I could just memorize the theory, I could actually scrape it to one without any understanding of the topics. But I still saw it as a challenge that I should totally be able to get through because I wasn't the only person who came to do computer science without any prior experience of it or knowledge. And those people were succeeding big time. So I wasn't wishing for a first anymore. I just kind of told myself to enjoy, relax this year because ultimately it did not matter. I will explain later why. And I walked out of my exams thinking that I got somewhere between 65 and 75. So I was like, okay, I might be on the boundary again. And then <laughs> on the results day, and I see this and I'm like, this is impossible. I, I was like staring at thinking, how on earth did this happen? I was trying harder this year. I actually put in more time because I couldn't understand the topics. I wanted to get a better understanding of them. I was reading ahead. I was like watching YouTube videos. I'm like, and this is how it's paid off? I definitely did not expect those grades. And that's when I'm telling you do not get hung up on numbers because you know, 40% in some subjects is a fail. And I got 47 in one of the exams. And overall, it's still ended up being a 2-1. And you're like, how net is this possible? Julia, you're literally solving half a question and getting a 2-1 from Cambridge. Exactly, exactly. That's why you should really see what other people in the year group are getting. And if the highest anyone could get was 70, then of course 50 would be a 2-1. When I saw the results, we can see who got what. I saw that a lot of people moved from 2-1 to a first. And I'm like, clearly those people did something amazing and I should do that as well. Now, we might pause here and you might ask, why on earth are you complaining about a 2-1 from Cambridge? People come to this uni for reasons and a lot of us have very high expectations for ourselves that were not imposed by the society or parents or anyone but ourselves. So when we start getting grades that are not above 90, it's like, what am I doing wrong? And so I was like, oh, wow, I might still not understand the way I'm learning. This was one of my biggest kind of realizations that I might be putting in more time, but I'm not doing it correctly. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. All I'm saying is that I went from feeling like a special snowflake at A-levels to being like, wow, I'm not, I'm nowhere near the top now. And I cannot believe there can be people below me because I already saw my results as being like pretty horrible. So I request a breakdown of my questions thinking like, I really want to know how it happened. and. We have to solve five questions, each worth 20 marks, and we can actually, when we solve them, we see how many marks each question would be. And so I actually had 
two out of 20 for one of the questions or like five or six and I was like wow three questions would sum up to like a good, good well answered question and um, that was a shock for me I thought I wrote so much for that question to get two out of 20 and by the way this is not they're not essays they're not subjective they were like what's the definition of this and I knew the definition I really wanted to see the actual marked papers but sadly we are not allowed to see that so anyway it was a mixture of feelings I was both shocked and glad because I saw the numbers I was horrified and at the same time I'm like wow I'm so glad it was still a 2-1 because at any other time it could have been a third easily now, in terms of ranking, I fell to 69th out of 96. Um, I didn't want to say it last time because for me such numbers were so embarrassing and I thought, I know none of you are judging me, hopefully, but I still was like, how can I be preaching here about like sitting in Cambridge with such results? There are people getting first while having babies and having medical issues and I'm like I dedicate 85% of my time to studying and this is what I get. Looking back I'm kind of glad that happened it gave me a massive push I was like wow first year probably did give me a push as well but this is what I needed I feel like it was easier for me to start working in third year with my two two ones rather than having to kind of maintain that level of a first. Now third year, I will not drag on anymore. I know you all want to know that I got a first. I didn't film my reaction because I was in a library on my phone and I was crying and thankfully there was no one else in the same room. I was so overwhelmed because it's ridiculous. It's been like three years since I've last seen a good grade and it just brought back memories of A-levels and just being happy and seeing like wow I can work and I can get good grades there is some correlation indeed now in Oxford and other universities it's completely different in Imperial for example there is a weighting to different years so the ratio would be something like one three four and so you know it would get progressively more important to be getting good grades in Cambridge, they're like, nothing matters, guys. Really, nothing matters. Me being 29th would actually suffice for an offer from another university. I'll talk about it in my next video about my plans for 2018 and 19 and whether I'll leave the UK or stay and so on. So stay tuned if you want to see who rejected me. To stay for masters, I needed not to graduate. So I didn't really have a graduation ceremony like most of my friends. I'm not sure I'll continue being a Cambridge vlogger and it might be the last time you have seen me in this role. So I want to thank all of you for getting through this journey with me. I, it's unbelievable that I started vlogging for my first year and managed to kind of catch up by the end of third year. No matter which stage you joined on, I want to thank you for subscribing and I would very much like you to keep watching my videos because I will not stop even if I leave Cambridge. There is a lot of exciting things to say about this education system that I went through and about the perks and the downsides of Cambridge. Also, if I randomly get hired by any cool tech companies, of course, there will be a lot of interesting information about how I got in and my internships and full-time jobs. So I'm not saying goodbye, I'm just mentioning the fact that I have a BA degree and since everyone for some reason is using their last year's grade, I can happily say that I graduated from Cambridge with a first. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, bye. I will not drag on anymore. If you watch my videos, you know... Julia Bibi graduated with a BA, no subject, stop shouting.